once I'm in that cage, I have the gas tank and I have the ability to put you out. I'm not trying to be your friend. I'm not trying to make you feel happy. It's a fist fight, like, what else do you want me to do? Shake your hand, hug you? No, fuck you, have your mother do that for you. My ego does get offended when I start hearing that Cheeto deserves a title shot over me. I like to show people that I'm good by fighting, not by telling people that I'm really good. Just because there's a new shiny toy doesn't mean that I'm not worth anything. Fighting has been my best friend for the last 13 years of my life. I'm an introverted guy who doesn't really prioritize relationships and like social outings and stuff as much as getting better in the gym. And that's like where I'm the happiest. It's really the only times when I can come in and actually just feel free and that like the world doesn't really matter. That's just how I am, and that's just the way that I'm wired, and I've been doing pretty good for myself with it. Growing up, I recall always wanting to like be the best at things, and not to be arrogant, but like if I wasn't the best at things, I would make myself the best at things. I've kind of grown out of the competitiveness a little bit, or, or at least I, I have to be a little bit more of an adult about it now. <laughs> I remember early when I started MMA, if I had like a bad day sparring, it would literally ruin my week. I definitely had to go through the whole process of learning that having a giant emotional response to losing is not a way that really helps you become a winner. What helps you become a winner is looking at it, figuring out how to get better at it, and then just make the steps instead of having a big giant emotional response to it. Corey Sandhagen, nearly flawless since bursting into the UFC. No bigger challenge in his career than tonight. The TJ fight, it was kind of a bummer because I wanted to win. The damage on the face of Dillashaw does not tell the whole story. It is anybody's guess. You don't really know all the time what the judges are exactly looking for, whether it's damage control, ringmanship, all of the things that are on their little list. The winner by split decision, TJ Dillashaw! It made me really look at fighting a lot different. For holding against the cage? You don't get to win by one point in fighting because that's a coin toss in the judge's eyes. There is no winning by a couple yards in this thing. Like, you have to smoke people. So I think having that loss to TJ has kind of helped me a lot, just like up the ante. Corey Sandhagen, his first UFC championship opportunity and a matchup as good as any in recent memory. I was really excited to fight Jan. I got the call on about five weeks notice. I thought it was the universe doing me a big favor. Went into the Jan fight, fought really, really good. Just made a couple of technical mistakes. Oh! oh spinning back oh, fist. Hurt him. Got hit really good at the end of the third round. I've never really had my bell rung like that before. Made him for like a really bad fourth round and then had to make for like a really conservative fifth round. Kind of changed the momentum of the fight. Be honor! Yeah! Good on Jan for landing the one shot that he did. As long as I'm pushing forward and still learning from all of the mistakes that I'm making, then I, I, can, I can go about living with, with my head held high. When you were tight uh, okay. and pulled it in uh -huh. here, that was great. Okay. The last thing left to do is just use your head. Yeah. When you walk, but when you walk it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Exactly. That whole time off that I took after the on fight, I wanted to work on two things. I wanted to work on how to make them have to wrestle me because now I don't get to always be the best kickboxer on the night. So I need to address that issue, which means being able to wrestle a little bit more. And if not get someone all the way down, at least be able to tie up with them so that I can start winning some of those times. Also, I wanted to work on my elbows because a lot of the people that I'm fighting are gonna try to close distance very quick. When people do try to close distance very quick, punches and kicks don't really work the best, knees and elbows do. So when I think about the year that I took off between the Yan and the Song fight, everything that won me that fight against Song were things that I was working on in that year off. So smart by Corey Sanhagen. 
This is a, a new wrinkle to his game because when we think Corey Sandhagen, we don't think wrestling. I think I made Song think about the takedown a lot, which stopped him from being able to attack at the same pace that I feel like he would have. But also, I ended the fight with an elbow. Up elbow right across the eyebrow. That's the bloody mess is Song Yudong. That's bad. That might be the end of this. While I know that that wasn't the peak of the performance that I know that I can give, I do have to give myself a lot of credit because those are two things that I worked on for an entire year, and those are two things that won me a really good fight against someone who's a really good opponent. That's going to do it. That's it. The victory by TKO due to Dr. Stoppage will go to Corey Sandhagen, who's back in the win column. I understood what was going on uh, when they offered me song. You know, I was technically coming off of two losses. I do think, you know, that there was a little bit of, hey, let's see if Song's better than Corey, not, hey, let's give Corey a really good fight now. You know, I, I don't really feel like it was that way, which I'm completely fine with. Honestly, I, I feel like that win is gonna age really, really well because in about three, four years, I think Song is gonna be in the top five and, uh, and I'll be able to say that I beat him. Marlon Vera is gonna be my opponent. Has a lot of hype right now. I feel like people are almost counting me out in this weird, unthoughtful way. I'm excited to shut all the noise up about Cheeto being the next guy who gets to fight for the title. My philosophy right now is there's a time and place for everything, and right now the time is to be a world champ, and that's all that I really care about. Si la metes, te ganas un helado, tal vez. Ah, casi. El ángulo está ahí, solo falta un poquito más de fuerza nomás. Uf, casito, ¿sí ves? Nacho's seven years old, and it's a cool kid. I love the kid. Nice. I have a lot of fun keeping him around me. El enfocado. Ooh, almost. You know, I remember as a little kid, I always started to like hang out with my dad, go with him everywhere he goes, and he was always like laughing with people and carrying good energy. <laughs> he was kind to people, he was funny, and you know, monkey see, monkey do. That's how you lead by example, you know, you don't try to tell everybody what's the best to do in this world. You just act right. That's what I try to do with my kids. Show with example. Uno los vamos. Yes. Good job. Y el helado. <laughs> helado? He want ice cream. Go to three, two, one, go! This one's all guts, it's all heart. It's all fucking, you got him. Said, so look at the kid. Look at it, somebody wants to be a world champion. 10-6, beautiful. Success brings a lot of good things, but at the end of the day, you gotta keep putting your eyes in the price. I always push myself because when I wasn't here, I would give my life to be where I am right now. Two, one, go! Now that I'm in this position, I will get my life to be a world champion, so you're always aiming for more. Condition is gonna take over, baby. Condition is taking over. Beautiful work. Cheeto's always been focused, always wanted this. He's always a hard worker. But over the last four fights, he really kind of reevaluated his career. There was layers of confidence that's been added. There's been layers of skill that's been added. There's been a layer of just attitude in general and belief in himself. Big spot tonight for Marlon Chito Vera. Right now he finds himself in front of one of the greatest fighters of all time in Jose Aldo. If I go back to the Aldo fight, that was the biggest opportunity I had up till that day. I get too confident and I fuck it up. That was on me. If you're in Chito Vera's corner, this is an absolute disaster. Yeah, worst case scenario. Jose Aldo! That loss haunted me for months, and I remember just waking up in the middle of the night, 
fucking upset and just screaming at myself and just going for a run at 2 a.m., 4 a.m., I was mad. The only way to get over it is make yourself pay. I work harder than ever. And then when I fought Edgar, that was kind of like my second chance. I told myself, you don't beat this guy. You don't pass his test, you're done. Chito Vera gets the highlight he was looking for. I got a great finish on a place I dreamed to fight my whole life in MSG. And that opened the door to my first main event against Rob Fon. The UFC's Bantamweight division does not have a more prolific finisher in it than Ecuador's Marlon Chito Vera. Probably one of the toughest fights I've ever had. I don't know many people thought I would last not even a couple of rounds with him. Fon trying desperately to survive. The heel straight upstairs. Oh, he's hurt bad. I mean, that looks like movie makeup on Rob Fon. I beat the shit out of him the way I say I would, and that gave me pretty much a huge opportunity in a sold out arena in fight with a former champion, huge name. Chito Vera has a massive hurdle to climb because Dominic Cruz is no easy out for anyone. This dude is the greatest band weight of all time. That's a guy that had in front of him the best of the best. And I just put all the trust in myself and in my team. He hurt him bad. And work like I really won a world title. I put the guy out in the fourth round. Oh! Cruz is down after a huge shot. And Cheeto ends it. He wanted to make a championship statement. What a way to stamp it. Beat the guy the way I beat him. Give me a lot of experience. Give me a lot of ways to think and say, like, OK, I can do these things. Nice. Yeah, shifting that way back and forth, yeah. Tried to go up, shifting back and forth. Right now, I'm heading to my third main event in a row, and I'm as ready as it gets. I'm feeling good, I'm sharp, and I'm going to beat the fuck out of Corey Sanhagen. Corey Samhagen is as tough as fight as we can get. This guy's a student of the game, and he's very talented. He's got a great arsenal. Taking the life out of him, you gotta fucking drown him now. He punches, he kicks, you know, he shoots. He tries to keep you off balance, really, for the most part, the whole fight. There you go. I wanna see Cheeto really up his ass right from the get-go. Easy money, buddy. Nice. He's a good fighter. He's tough, but I feel I can go deeper. You know, if I get in there and kick his ass, pretty much as a ticket to a title shot. Who knows? Fuck what happened next. I gotta go in there and fuck this guy up. That's all that's in my mind. So, Corey, do you know how many tickets you're getting for Vegas? Four? Mm -hmm. so enough for you three. OK, you're going? Excuse me. Did you get the same flight? I'm going to book it, yeah, because I have a school off. We might see the Jonas Brothers after. Ooh, Jonas Brothers. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to Vegas for the Jonas Brothers. Yeah. She sent me a thing, and I was like, she was like, hey, the Jonas Brothers are playing that weekend. I was like, OK, I'll try to get us some tickets. <laughs> I don't have like a ton of friends. I have like five or six like really close friends. And then I have my family, and I have my fiance, and I have my sister. And that's kind of my circle. I'm getting an Airbnb this time. I hate the casinos. I told you that. Yeah, it's noisy down yeah. on that the strip. The last fight, I hated it. It was very unusual. Corey stayed with us the night before the fight. And yeah. he said it was too noisy in the hotels. But now I'm getting an Airbnb this time. How big? Maybe we'll stay with you. Four <laughs> bedroom. No, definitely not. Definitely not. <laughs> Your guys' is, the place was nice last time, though. Sheila has her favorite necklace on. It's a boxing uh, necklace. I bought when Corey first started fighting. Kind of started in the basement with his buddies. Yeah, you, you, you bought us like a couple of pairs of boxing gloves when you. Yeah. And then we would just go downstairs and beat the shit out of each other. Who buys like a pair of boxing gloves for like 13 year old kids? We're going to beat the shit out of each other. Any good parent would do that. Really? 
<laughs> like giving my we could have broke each other's noses. Oh and come stuff. on! And if I, you didn't, you're just playing around. Oh, yeah, why you that's, that's, that's fair. <laughs> Having my family around is you know like I, I really I can't even put into words how helpful it is when I'm really going through it because this job can be really stressful sometimes. It's helped more than I probably even am aware of in in fighting. I'm always learning stuff about myself. Kind of the interesting part about professional athletics more than almost just the games being played is it's like a bunch of like 20 to 30 year olds trying to like also figure out the world at the same time. Right now I would say that I'm trying to find how to compete at a really high level without getting to the point of what feels like anger. You can go in and, and be super free and be super light and not have any emotion like anger or anything like that, as long as you're motivated by like pure things, which I've been really been working on since the song fight. When I was in the back for the song fight, I was like forcing this character that wasn't me at that moment. Corey! I was forcing this like savage, angry person that has helped me a ton in the past do really well in fights, but it just felt off and it didn't feel very good. It, it, it felt kind of like slimy a little bit because I wasn't being super pure and, and, and it became distracting. Since then, I've kind of just been working on being a more authentic person. Part of being a professional athlete and, and getting a lot of recognition and leaving a good legacy is having a bunch of wins, but also like what you leave to other people that are watching, I think is incredibly important. And uh, I wanna make sure that uh, I'm doing that also. Time, switch partners. Hurry up. Right now I'm trying to be a good guy in the MMA community. Better, nice. I do want to be like a good example for the kids that I coach. You can get tired going at that pace. That's okay. Push! I'm starting to realize what motivates you can change who you are inside. Push! And I don't want to be motivated by material things or be a world champ so that I can be famous or, or whatever it is. Nice job, guys. I really want to like help people. I do want to be a good example and an inspiring person. And I think that the MMA world definitely needs that. And while it might not get you the same exposure as someone that talks a lot of trash, I'm okay with that. I don't really like a lot of exposure anyways. <laughs> I try to be as much present as I can. Even if I really train a lot, I'm always really pretty much in the gym every day. The same energy I put into be a world champion, I have to put into be a, a better dad than I was yesterday. You have to keep knocking on the shoulder and be like, you need something, you're good. And I try my best and try harder every day. You gotta do it because, you know, time flies and then by the time they're 20, 22, they probably don't even have an attachment to you. You know, I'm just doing my best to let them know if you want it, you will get it, but you gotta work for it. Things just won't happen because you wish. You gotta work really hard to get anything in life. Thank you. My journey to this point, I had the hard road. I had the really long and hard road. I would say a lot of people will give up, but I try to see light at the end of the tunnel in, in everything in life. It's me and my wife have a kid early in our life. So I was. 18, she was 17. She couldn't work. She's a fucking 17 year old pregnant. Like, what's she gonna do? The right thing for me to do back then was giving up this dream of fighting and just go and fucking clean a table or work for my dad or do anything. But from the early days, my wife was always like, 
If you really want it, I know you can get it. And just keep going, keep going. The money will come one day. I really appreciate that from her. You know, it's been a long ride, but we've been holding it strong. Thank God, both of the families help us. They provide for us. Those are the things I will never forget because without that, there was no way I will continue a fighting career. We're grateful for the help we get for our families, and I feel the best thing I can do is just be a world champion, do the best I can, just to let them know it wasn't in vain what they give up for us. Vamos. For the day in the hood, huh? Hush, beautiful right hand. Hush, speed on that motherfucker, nice. Hush, yup. Hush, 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 hush. I feel Chino's future is being a world champion. Hush, nice. He's on a straight line to get there right now. I don't see any bumps in the road. There's gonna be some challenges. We got a serious challenge coming up. And Corey Sandhagen, I believe, is one of the toughest tests we have in the top five. Cheeto desires that pressure. He truly wants to fight, and he truly wants to be the best of the world. This is his dream, and it's his identity. Cheeto Vera is gonna be world champion. He's gonna be UFC Bantamweight champion of the world. I just have a good mindset and a good mentality towards life, you know? You want to go and get it. Nothing will just come to you. You got to fucking go and get it. I'm always pushing a little more, expanding a little bit more my limit. That's what makes the difference between me and everybody. And I put every single ounce of my soul, my heart, and my mind into this one day. I don't have a life past this fight. My life stops there. A win over this guy is pretty much a title shot. Massive for my career, for myself, for my country. And the most fucked up thing about it is like there's no guarantees in life. You can do everything correctly and shit can not go your way. That's why you just gotta be strong and keep going. The only guarantee is that like, I'm going to put everything into my dreams to make them come true. And I want to be a world champion, so I'm going to hurt this guy. I'm going to break this guy. I'm going to send this guy home. I'm going to finish him. Cheeto's a dog. I think he's super durable. He knows how to make himself super dangerous. But I really don't think that he has the skill set to beat me. I know that I'm better than Cheeto. I think that I'll walk away the winner, no doubt. Life is a race, and I'm hustling like I'm running out of time. I really want it more than anybody else, and that's why I'm here right now. I'm gonna get it done. When fight time comes, I'm gonna fuck him up.